Let's talk about meetings. Let's talk about meetings in general. I think it's fair to say, and most people would probably agree, that they have or they experience too many meetings, too long a meeting, and too many people in those meetings. So if people do agree with that statement, then what they're saying is meetings in their world aren't as effective or as ideal as they might be. What I might say is that to describe a meeting, what is it? A meeting is a, it's a, an expensive, heavyweight way of getting something done. So why do people go to all these meetings? Well, one, people go to them because they organize them. Two, they go because they're invited. Three, because they want to meet people in general. Four, because they want to make a contribution sometimes, but certainly not always. Um, and five, maybe just to feel involved. I'm not sure, even combined, if those are always enough reasons to have the number of people in a meeting that are often in a meeting. So I think to myself, what's the alternative? If you don't hold a meeting, what else can you do? Well, you could hold a one-to-one. -one. That's a mini meeting between two people, a one-to-one. -one. Or you could hold a one-three-one -one between three people. A lot of meetings are 110 one or 181 one, where there's a lot of people and the meeting then becomes expensive and heavy, which is the problem itself. So that's one way you could have a one to one. You can have email and you can have SMS or other versions of electronic communication. And what's lost with electronic communication is the rounded discussion. You're with with an email, let's say you are ping ponging. A message, a reply, a message, a reply. Whereas if you do it in the round face to face, you get a more rounded discussion and you probably cover more angles more quickly because you can talk faster than you can type a lot quicker. So whilst the email SMS version of meeting is as a place, it doesn't get you to where you want to go as quickly as you might want to travel. So if you have, maybe, maybe in your meeting of eight that you have every Monday morning or 10 or 12 people, there are the crucial three that really must be there. And maybe there's four or five people there who are nice to have in the meeting because they represent specific functions and they should be there because that function should be there. But ask yourself this, most meetings have an action log and when, when you have a meeting with eight or 10 people in it, only three or four people are gonna really talk. The rest are gonna be silent. That's the 80-20 rule, that's burrito, it's just what you see. So in that instance, wouldn't it be better off if those people who don't really contribute to the discussion, wouldn't it be better if they just got the action log? And because going to a meeting and not contributing is an opportunity cost. It's an opportunity lost. You could have done something else if you weren't in that meeting. So if you went to that meeting as one of the non-core people and you sat there for 30 minutes just listening, it doesn't sound ideal, does it? So maybe what I'm saying here is that a better meeting might be a one two one or a one three one or a one four one even with a good action log off the back of it, which says, look, we invite you to these meetings, but we know your time is valuable. We'll send you the action log instead. Save yourself the bother and get some work done. Be more productive. So that's one way forward. Just to underline that point, consider this example. If you have a meeting of 10 people for 30 minutes, 
And by definition, that's a heavyweight meeting. That's a lot of man hours. Then 10 people for 30 minutes means that each person on average is going to speak for three minutes and is going to listen for 27. That's the average. That's what it's going to be. It won't actually be like that because there will be the Pareto and somebody's going to, one person's going to talk for 10 minutes, another one's going to talk for eight, another one's going to talk for seven, and then the meeting's done. But in general, the average will be three minutes of speaking, 27 minutes of listening. So that 27 minutes of listening had better be relevant or you shouldn't be in the room. Interestingly, the opportunity cost or opportunity lost of a meeting isn't just the time that you spent in it. The meeting itself is only one third of the process. There are two, part, two pieces, one either side. There is the preparation for the meeting and there is the follow up or activity that you commit to after the meeting and roughly they can be split into one third, one third, one third, one third prep, one third meeting, one third follow up. What does that mean? It means if you have 10 hours of meetings a week, it's possible that you also have 10 hours of prep and 10 hours of follow up. If you can't imagine that, let's say five hours of prep, five hours of follow-up. Certainly you want to prep for your meetings by considering what you want your contribution to be in that meeting. Otherwise you haven't prepared properly. And on the other side, if you've come out of a meeting and there weren't any actions and certainly no actions for you, then again, it's like, mm, there should have been something or you shouldn't have been there maybe. So, the meeting workload is of interest to a senior team in particular, I would suggest. And there's probably a methodology we can employ here to understand the burden of meetings on an organization. So if you imagine a company of 10 people who are all doing 40 hour weeks, let's say, so that's 400 man hours capacity of that business. They've got 400 hours worth of work. They can spend it how they like. But if they have, let's say, 80 hours of meetings a week, 80 man hours, then and let's say the preparation is 40 man hours and the follow up is 40 man hours. That's 160 hours out of your 400 solely on meetings, the prep for the meeting, the meeting and the follow up after. Now, it might be that everything that was done in those meetings and in the actions was absolutely essential and was needed anyway. Might well be the case, might not be the case. So, but the point is made that 160 hours out of 400 is a large number. So it needs to be well spent. And once you've actually done that particular measurement, and I think it is worth doing, it's worth getting a matrix of days of the week and then names of all your staff down the left-hand side and how many hours each person spends in each meeting across the week. It's worth doing that to get that overall picture of who's overloaded with meetings and who isn't, what's the average, who's above, who's below, and, um, and what's the total. And what's the total against your capacity in terms of hours? So that exercise is very much worth doing. The factory manager level should do that. And then what? Well, you can then do two things. You can split that workload of meetings into the essentials, the day-to-day, -day, like a daily review meeting, a weekly review meeting, a daily planning meeting, a weekly planning meeting, um, weekly P&L review, and so on. So there's the routine meetings that the business needs to remain stable and on course and to, to make corrections 
when nothing else is changing except managing the day-to-day -day of a stable product range, stable workforce, or relatively stable, and you're just trying to manage things so you stay on the carriageway. It's worth knowing what percentage of total time of our 400 hours is spent on managing the day-to-day. -day. And out of our 160 hours of meetings, it might be that 100 is spent on day-to-day. -day, which means, what is the other 60 spent on? Well, the, the other 60 would be spent on developmental improvements, new products, new equipment, new suppliers, new customers, growing, developing the business. And that is an interesting thing because, as I've seen this several times, where a senior team needs to manage, I've mentioned this elsewhere actually, but senior teams need to manage the rate of change that a business can absorb. So if our 10 men doing 400 hours are spending 100 hours on routine meetings and 60 hours on introducing three new products, let's say, over the next three months. That's 60 hours, three new products. So 20 hours a week, man hours a week, devoted to one new product. But if that was to double to six new products, now it's a lot harder. We're now at 220 out of 400. And if you were to make it more products, it would be even harder. So I think together with an overall matrix of the meetings that you have in your business, names down one side, days of the week across the top, hours in each box, it's worth then splitting them into day-to-day -day management and developing the business so you understand the split and see if you're happy with it. And that'll start informing you as to how much change your people can manage because they have to do the day-to-day -day hours of meetings to manage the business that makes that keeps things stable and then there's the development meetings and they will feed back to you if that's too much or just enough and they can't do any more and you need to know that so you then got those things going on a total picture standard meetings development meetings and an emerging clarity as to how much can they cope with